Hi, and welcome to the latest Hydra in a Box demo, the last before Open Repositories 2017. I've got a lot to tell you about, so hang in there, and here we go. Since our last demo in late April, we have released the beta release, the first beta release of Haiku, and we've turned our attention to beta testing. You'll notice there's a new Haiku wiki page on the DuraSpace wiki, and there's a bunch of information here about what Haiku is, how to use it, um, documentation for Haiku, and how to get in touch with the folks running the beta test. You'll notice here there's a really impressive uh, list of names and institutions. A great bunch of people are helping us test Haiku. We're really thankful for the, the time and effort that they're putting into this. They've been making a, a real um, impact on the project by helping us make it even better than it already was. Related to the, the beta test, also I wanted to mention that the Haiku Direct pilot program for the Haiku Direct service that DuraSpace is planning to offer, this has also begun. You can find a page about it in an article at duraspace.org and it's all about the pilot program and how our beta testing has gone so far. So there's a lot more information there if you want to dig in a little deeper. So that said, since our last demo, our focus has largely been on testing, in-browser testing, and bug fixes. And bug fixes can be a little bit challenging to show in a demo, but I wanted to call out all the work that we've done on fixing bugs. It's been there have been dozens and dozens of bugs that have been fixed. And along with that, we've also been removing technical debt and making improvements to our deployments. So we've made a number of improvements and simplifications to our Docker configuration of Haiku, thanks to um, to the Haiku beta testers who've been helping us a lot with that. And related, we've been making improvements to our Amazon Web Services cloud formation templates. In addition, we've done work improving our multi-tenancy support in Haiku, things like adding database constraints to make sure that our multi-tenancy is solid, doing better error checking and testing of some edge cases uh, that we have uncovered as we've had more people using the software. So it's great that we're finding all this in advance of our grant expiring. And along with that, we've been just marching along and supporting new versions of the software that Haiku depends upon, including Rails, which we now support, Rails 5.1. Okay, so that aside, I want to start showing you some stuff. So. I'm really happy about this feature. In past demos, you've seen that we've added support for for Spanish and Chinese, thanks to, to the Samvera community folks who've been pitching in and contributing these. So now you'll notice the language dropdown supports a few more languages. We can now do German, French, Italian, and Portuguese. And it turns out that it's actually quite easy for us to add translations. So as folks have needs for other languages, we can add those pretty quickly. In addition, we've had some improvements and expansions come in for our Spanish and Chinese translations from native speakers. So those are getting better all the time. All right, I'm going to show you some hosted service features. One that I just want to mention is for hosted services, when you run a haiku, by default, you can um, basically create a new tenant in the open. You, you don't have to be an authenticated user. Anyone can create a tenant. Well, that is great for development and for kicking the tires, but not so great if you're running a hosted service and expect people to to pay for access. And so we've, we've added a feature to uh, disable open signup. And so as we have done that, we've also been building out some what you might call super administrator functionality. So this is for the users that manage the entire site, not just a particular tenant. So if you notice here in the upper left hand corner, there's a new accounts link on the splash page. I am a super administrator and now you can see a list of all the tenants in your instance. So you can expand the list and go up you can paginate through the list 
and then for each tenant which it gives you its identifier within the system and the name that has been given by the tenant creator you can edit it now there's some stuff in here I wouldn't necessarily touch unless you you know exactly what you're doing you can tweak URLs for solar and fedora endpoints um, but the thing I really want to show you here is the manage link so you might be wondering if you disable open sign up how do people get accounts well right now one way that you can do that is if you're a super administrator you can go ahead and put in an email address and invite someone as a new administrator I didn't actually do it because this isn't my tenant and I don't want Steve uh, to, to, to see me peeping around his in his tenant so I won't do that but this is a really exciting new functionality that I think folks are going to be using this in a hosted context will uh, get a lot of value from we've got a bunch of tickets too like this so we'll be continuing to expand this functionality all right, I want to show you some administrative set related functionality. Specifically, I want to point out that we've um, we've automatically added to the admin set, um, to the default admin set, pardon me, the this ability for registered users to be able to deposit to it. So that means that as soon as your site comes up and you create that default admin set, all of the users you have can deposit to it. This is retaining backwards compatibility with past versions of um, Hyrax and Sufia, so folks um, can self-deposit quite easily. Related to this, when you create new admin sets, you'll notice that there's a new um, automatic uh, listing here of repository administrators. So all the repository administrators in your tenant um, will automatically get manage access to all your admin sets. This makes sure that an admin set doesn't become orphaned because only a certain user or set of users uh, can edit it. And related, now you can see down in the depositors section, you can allow all registered users to deposit and just as easily remove it if you wish to restrict uh, deposit within that admin set to specified users and groups. All right, a metadata change. We have added the ability to uh, use geonames as a controlled vocabulary for the location field. So here I uploaded an image of a house in Austin, Texas. So I scroll down to the location field, start typing, does type ahead, and then I can select Austin, Texas. Now when I save it, that actually persists as a URI and you can dereference that later. Okay, let's see. Next thing I want to show you is some work we've done on content blocks or the ability to edit content on your site in a, in a WYSIWYG control. Prior to this work we, we had these content blocks and the number of tabs was starting to get a little bit out of hand so we've gone ahead and broken them into two sections, one for content blocks and one for entire pages. So you can do all of your about page and help page editing in the browser. And a new feature is now you can you have the ability to customize your deposit agreement and your terms of use. We know that um, we can expect pretty much all users to want to customize this to make sure that they're in line with your institution's um, regulations. So now you can go ahead and do that. All right, and the last feature I wanted to mention is embargoes and leases. So we've had that support in Haiku and Hyrax for a while now, and we now have some code. It hasn't yet been integrated into our current design, but there's now a way that you can get in and view all of your active embargoes and leases and inactive ones, and then act on them. So currently, embargoes and leases aren't automatically enforced. You need a way to, um, to get in and do that, and that will be coming um, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. That's all I wanted to touch on this time. A bunch of us will be traveling out to uh, Brisbane for Open Repositories 2017. We'll be giving some presentations on Haiku and the Hydra in a Box project. We really hope to see those of you who are there. So please do come to our sessions, ask us questions, and thanks again to all of you who put so much work into this project in the both the beta test and also the service pilot and the Samvera community. You folks have uh, been a big part of why we've been able to 
to succeed with this project so far. So thank you.